Welcome to In Conversation with Brad Wenders. This week I have a wonderful guest by the name of Kaylee. Oh, Kaylee Venn? Yes. <laughs> or are you Kaylee Potton? Kaylee Venn, yes. Okay, and that, I, I won't even bother saying anything more about you because you've got so much to tell. Kaylee, could you just tell us a little bit about where you're at, what you're doing, who you are? Oh, uh, so currently, I mean, there's a lot going on in my life right now, and it's cool. It's all a bit up in the air. Um, but I think that's what I love about it. I'm currently in Italy outside. I'm currently in a campsite um, and I'm currently traveling Europe in a camper van, living in a camper van. I um, quit my job about six months ago now and uh, kind of I, I quit my job for I lived in I was working in the corporate world and I really wanted to work my way up in the corporate business. And I just realized that that wasn't my dream anymore. So I really wanted to travel more and more and more. Um, I don't really know what that looked like, but I didn't need to have this long, all of a sudden for the first time in my life, I didn't need to have this long drawn out plan, which I'd always had before. So I quit my job and I'm now on the road traveling. I've been traveling through all these countries and I'm just figuring it out as I go and just trying to figure out this new version of me. Who am I and who is the next version of Kaylee? Wow. that That's a lot. You know, that's so you and you and I have known each other a very long time, you know, since since my yes. age began with a two and your age began with a one. So like a really long time. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, so the thing that really struck me about what you're doing, because I've been watching what you do on social media and read a bit of your blog, the kind of life that you're living, the kind of life you want to forge for yourself is the sort of thing that's normally, you know, your, your trust fund babies or the people that have got very, very yeah. wealthy mummy and daddy. And that wasn't your background at all. So no right. <laughs> how how did you how did you get the freedom to do what you're doing from a really really modest background yeah so um i mean as you know very well you know my family very very well i grew up living on a council estate um my mom worked part time to support the four children um uh, and and obviously look after us all um i think I learned from a very young age. I was always quite academic. Um, I learned from a very young age that the harder you work, the more money you earn. And the, and my mum didn't ever give me pocket money or anything like that. So from the first, like from the age of 12, it was I got £10 a week and whatever I wanted, um, bar toiletries, um, I had to pay for. So I figured out from the age of, yeah, sort of 14, I got my first proper job. And then by 17, I was working three jobs whilst going to school. Um, and I just realized the more you work, the more nice things you can have. And I think also growing up from a very modest background, I'm not particularly materialistic, like things like clothes and, and, and things like that don't really bother me too much. It was always about experiences. And again, growing up, I didn't, I wasn't able to see the world. And I remember distinctly having this conversation with my nan saying, one day I'm going to see the world. And she turned around to me and looked me dead in the eyes and she went, can you make sure you do that? Because so many people say they're going to do it and they never do it. And one of my core values is that what I say I'm going to do, this is actually to my detriment as well as like to a good thing. But one of my core values is um, whatever I say I'm going to do, I will do it. No matter how long it takes me to do, I will do it. So um, I went to university. I studied maths at university and um I wanted to keep my options open because I realized that you can you can decide to do one thing and then you change your mind even if you're certain in that moment that that's the thing you want to do like you you can change your mind especially as you grow up like things things really really change yeah. so I wanted to keep my options open so maths was a really broad one for me um and then I went into the finance world and um I really wanted to be a teacher with all of me I've always wanted to be a teacher I love teaching so much but you go into the corporate world and you realize you can make way more money doing that than mm. teaching which is so sad because teachers are I mean we're bringing up they're bringing up the future generation it's just absolutely bonkers to me that they don't get paid half as much as they should but um sadly working in the financial world you can get paid so much more and if you work hard you really get rewarded for it and I was on in my head money that I never dreamed that I would be earning and they get you the nice things like all the experiences so when I met Luke when I was 20, um, I said to him I wanted to go traveling after I finished university. And he said he'd already traveled and done his time abroad. Um, and could we kind of do a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Compromise. Compromise, that's the one. Uh, if we could just compromise and say that every one of our holiday would be a big adventure, 
um, could we stay together? And I thought that was fair enough. And then the adventures just got more and more and more and more. So I, I think we ended up realizing that we were just earning so much money and we were kind of working to be able to live. And it just it just didn't feel like it aligned with our core values. So I quit my job six months ago. I was saving so hard. Um, and I realized I was sitting on this big pile of cash and I was like, what am I saving for? Um, sadly, we've had some sad news in the family. Um, and you realize that life is very short. And uh, it was something that I said I was going to do was see the world. I had a mission to see every country in the world and I will die trying. Um, and um, yeah, I just, I was saving for a pension and I was like, what if we don't make it that far? Yeah. What if, like, really, 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 I'm young and fit now. I can sit at a desk when I'm 80. I don't mind. <laughs> like, I will figure it out. I, I also have such strong faith and belief in myself that I'm smart enough to know that I will figure it out and that I would never let my pot run dry. So I don't mind what, I have no ego anymore. I did, I massively did about having this ego about being successful in the city and being a CEO. And, and that was what success really meant to all people that you had to be big in the city to be con like put on this pedestal of success and earning lots and lots of money. But now it's like, as long as I'm doing the things I love, I, I don't mind working in a bar. I don't mind working online like now I'm doing the tutoring I don't mind doing anything that I can to have the life that I want to live and this is the new me and this is the me in the moment and that might not be me in 10 years but right now that's the me that I want so I quit my job and I realized that um, I'm trying to make this money stretch obviously I'm quite fortunate in the fact that I do have savings to back up on mm. um, so I went traveling on my own Luke was like I'm not quitting my job I'm not quitting my job <laughs> I was like okay bye I'm gonna go then because I'm not waiting for anyone um so I said there was a few things that I wanted to achieve there was like things like I wanted to go to a women's entrepreneur um meet up somewhere around the world um because I really want to start my own business um and I want to meet more women all of my friends in my life seem to be men I have a few very very good female friends but I wanted to meet more women that were doing what I was doing um I wanted to learn a language and I wanted to live abroad and there was these other little things that I wanted to do so then I signed up and I was like, oh, Luke, I'm going to go to Spanish school. And he was like, great, thinking I was going to go to Spain. Um, no, <laughs> I decided to book on to Spanish school in Costa Rica. And he was like, sorry, what? I was like, yeah, I'm going to be gone for a few months. Um, and he was like, well, I thought you were going to go to Spain. Like, what's, what's this all about? And I was like, I'm doing this. Like, I'm really doing this. So after being in Vietnam for two months, Costa Rica for two months, and doing a around the world tour uh, twice, um, he got jealous and he's finally quit his job and now we're living out of a camper van. We have no house anymore and now we're living in a camper van and I've been to six countries in the past two and a half weeks living wow. out of a van, living a very modest life, um, very, very modest life, <laughs> kind of going to the toilet in the forest kind of modest life. Um, but I, I'm doing what I, I said I was going to do. And I, I want to make my money last as long as I possibly can so I don't have to go back to work. I mean, that, that's fantastic. And I, I understand what you're saying there about the, you know, the benefits of working hard. And you have the, the benefit of being a bright girl. You know, you've always been intelligent. You've always had a head and shoulders. And I think you've always had a really good attitude. But how does... so? Sorry, I'll give some context. This. I've been reading um, The Trading Game by Gary Stevenson. I don't know if you're familiar with the book. Okay. Yeah. And, and he, no, no, no. Yeah. he's a guy from Ilford who was from a working class family who ended up being a trader in the city and making a whole lot of okay. money, and which is very fortunate to yeah, get, yeah. get that job. Um, he was a smart guy, very good at maths, and he won an internship in a national game. That was how he got there. And he said that his he kind of found that the only people that were getting internships in, in trading were people that uh, had you know, a friend of dad or a friend of mom or a friend of the family or buying their way in. Right. So mm -hmm. how, how did you find getting into the corporate world from, you know, your background, going to university and then getting those jobs in the first week? How do you go about that? So, I mean, obviously the degree helps, mm -hmm. um, that, that really helps, but I had an internship. I didn't, I didn't go into the corporate world completely blind. I knew that, um, a lot of people were doing the same things, but also I was very aware that, yeah, I like to think that I'm intelligent and maybe slightly above average, but I didn't go to Oxford or Cambridge. So how do you get those jobs at the big banks and things like that that all these other students are getting? There was no way. 
I was getting those. So I wrote that off. That was not happening. You do try to leverage on who you know. Um, mm. I leveraged off of everybody I knew and I just reached out and uh, I, I said to people like, do you have internships going? I'll, I'll work. I'll do anything, basically. I just want to learn. Um, so one of the guys, I didn't get a job through him, but he got me a foot in the door. He gave me an interview. Uh, one of the guys at the rugby club and it was a five hour interview um, for an internship, a three month internship. Um, and it was like, I, I interviewed with the, uh, the CFO, the CEO, the, like the head of the COO, everything for a three month internship. Um, I had to do a team exercise. I had to do, um, uh, writing out an email. I had to do a maths challenge, everything. It seemed way over the top for just an interview i remember coming out going my cheeks hurt from smiling because you have to yeah. smile i got an email at the end of the day saying so there was three internships that were going and there was 15 of us um and there was like an operations internship a finance internship and another one i can't remember um I wanted the finance inter internship because everyone told me, oh my God, you're doing a math degree. I assume you're going to go into finance. I was like, yeah, 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 of course I am. I didn't even know what that meant. I was either going to be an accountant or a finance like person. I didn't even know what that meant. I just heard that that's what people do with maths and that's how you earn money. Um, so I wanted the finance one. Um, I got an email at the end of the day after that internship and the three um, people were fighting over me. Uh, I was really, really pleased that I made an impression. Um, so that they didn't know where to put me they decided to put me in operations because that was going to give me more exposure to the business and finance in that particular in in the trade the trading company that I was working at it can kind of get you stuck and then you do finance and then you do finance forever whereas in the um internship that I was put in they gave me the opportunity to see every single area of the business so that then I could possibly decide where I wanted to go which was such a huge benefit mm. that I didn't wasn't really aware of at the time and the bosses that I had and I, I feel like I was so fortunate the bosses that I had allowed me to leverage off that they were like it's your internship you go and speak to whoever you want to sit with you sit with every company every every department and, and you see what you want to do it's it's your life at the end of the day um I was fortunate it was a paid internship as well um oh, wow. I think more and more they're being paid um because they realize that even like students need money to live like everyone needs money to live I think more and more there are being paid internships um so I did go into operations and I did sit with everybody. I sat with the accounting team thinking, oh, I have to go into accounting. Lots of people go, oh my God, you're doing a math degree. You have to be an accountant. You'll learn loads of money. And I was like, okay, yeah, I want to learn loads of money. I sat with the accountants and they were fabulous people. I sat with them for one hour and I walked back to my boss and I said, I'm never going to be an accountant. And he went, oh, you learned that from one hour. And I just went, I can't do that. That is not for me. I just, uh, that is just... And I think what the benefit is of every job I've ever done, and you probably know this as well, that what I love is that you learn about things that you don't want to do. So you learn a little bit more about yourself every time. And I'm not sure if there's a perfect job. There's always going to be a little bit of the job that you don't like, but you learn about going, that's the bit I want to drop. Like, I definitely don't want to do that bit again. I don't mind what I do as long as I'm learning and I'm growing, but that's the bit I don't want to do. So like, I think this is continuously learning. And this company that I was working for, I was so lucky because every single time at the end of my internship, sorry, let go back. At the end of my internship, I was offered a full-time job. They waited for me after my degree wow. and they said, we really want you to come back. Um, you, we will keep the job open for you in a year's time. So I was really, really lucky. Uh, I came back and did that and I was like, I want to learn what they're doing. And they're like, of course, like we're going to put you in that team now. So I was like, I want to learn to code. Um, I want to learn to trade. I want to learn to uh, manage a team. Okay, 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 sure. We'll, we'll find you the job that suits you because I wanted to learn all areas of the business so that one day I can be a CEO and I can really understand if any member of my team or my company comes to me and says, here's my problem. I'm really, really going to understand what it is that they're talking about. So my CV looks a bit of a mess because I just care about learning all of it. And I have no ego about being like, okay, that's my path. That's the one I'm on. I'm like, ah, do you know what? I was young when I decided that. I was a little bit younger. I've learned more now. And I can just change my mind and it's fine because I will figure it out. Um, and you do. Like, you hmm. just, 
like if you can really believe in yourself that you have like enough smarts to be able to go I will deal with the problem when it comes to me and I will figure it out then just do it <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah you know, it, it's absolutely amazing hearing you speak and I think even just you talking about your story there it shows the kind of person you are. You're sitting there, you're bubbly, you're smiling, you're enthusiastic. And I think that will come across in an interview. When someone wants to hire you, you're not sitting there going, oh, I really want to work and make loads of money. You genuinely care about your own career and your own development. And I think that that's amazing. And I, I, if I could afford you, I'd hire you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, <laughs> um, no, thank you. I think that um, it's in confidence is a funny thing though, I think, because I have always been a very personable person. You know this. Mm. Um, but it's um I'm I'm actually very insecure like people don't don't believe me when I tell them that it's all like I wouldn't say it's a show um but I I have my own insecurities but I just love people and I'm very much the kind of person where I wear my heart on my sleeve like you get what you get with me like if I'm sad you're gonna know about it if, if I'm annoyed with you you're gonna know about it but I, we just tell each other everything, we get it off our plates and then we deal with it and we move forward. I'm very black and white that if there's something wrong, then we deal with it. Um, I do think that's possibly helped me because I'm a personable person and I deal with that whole like, I'm very straight, like I don't like that. And then we go, well, that's tough because of this. So I'm like, well, teach me about that then. And we'll just learn together. And then we come to this compromise and understanding. Um, I do think that's helped me in the finance world. A lot of people tend to be more black and white. Mm. I did find though, when I came to the end of my sort of, no, uh, oh, I don't want to say tenancy. What's the word I'm looking for? When you've been at a company for end of my period at CNC, um, I was finding myself forcing myself into like more of a male attitude so the the trading world is very heavily dominated by men and I was yeah. really really fortunate the whole way through my career that um I had so many male cheerleaders who just wanted the best for me um and I joined I I I, I was a co um uh not co-founder of this women at cmc thing um where we basically would do everything in the company because the company was only 23 percent women so we were doing everything in the company to support women and i could leverage off my male allies to be able to help all those women who are potentially a little bit shyer couldn't really say what they needed so loudly or didn't have the relationships that i had with people because i'm just good morning good morning to absolutely everybody how are your children i want to know about everyone's children um so I, I wanted to do that but more and more as I was getting more and more senior and more desperate to be this new version of success that I had defined for myself I was I had mentorships and things like that and I my the deputy CEO was my mentor and he was fantastic but I think they were forcing me into more of a becoming more and more male oriented way more assertive I'm assertive anyway way more assertive and um, than I wanted to be and also I was finding that they were asking me to change who I am to cater for all these other senior people around me right. and it didn't it was just so unauthentic and I I was so burnt out I definitely suffered with massive massive burnout I was working like 19 hours a day at some point um just to become this like this new idea this obsessive idea of successful um and I was, yeah, I just forced myself to be the person that everybody else needed me to be. And I, like the burnout came, I, I suffered with depression as well for a little while. And it was all this confusion in my head that I just wasn't doing what I really, really wanted to be doing because something didn't feel right. It wasn't actually what I wanted to be doing. It was just everybody else's idea of success for me. And I was trying to make that happen. And I had to let go of a, quite a lot of ego to be able to say, actually, calm down step away of what from what everyone else expects of you and what do you expect from yourself and kind of let go of that I, I'm gonna say ego like it was it was a massive ego and and come I I feared that if I wasn't continuously putting on this show of what everyone else expected of me then I wasn't successful um and I just yeah I had to overcome that and be, like come back to like I know everyone throws it around but like my authentic self and be like okay what values do you really align with what do you actually want from this and what do you think is right hmm. for you and forget about what everyone else thinks and that is so hard like so unbelievably hard it's probably been about a year and a half process to be able to 
kind of let go of that idea of what everybody else thinks of you and mm. redefine your own version of success but I mean I'm not gonna say I'm anywhere near perfect but if I want to live the life I want to live then I had to overcome that and that was a real mind game for me so this new version of success where I'm not earning any money right now and that <laughs> is so weird <laughs> I've, I've been I had three jobs from the age of 17 like yeah, yeah. so I mean my, my next question I'll give you a little bit of context so you're one mm -hmm. of two people I know that have kind of done what you've done, like not people that are kind of close to me. And that is got a job, a trading desk in the city or in the corporate world and got to a point and gone, this is not for me. This is not what I want <laughs> yeah. to be doing. Like the money's great, but this is not what I want to be doing. Yeah, and right. both of these people that have, that have had that experience and, and probably around a similar age to you when, when the other one kind of jacked it in and said, this isn't for me anymore, were both women do you think that there's a, a difference in values and a difference in like priorities between men and women? I don't know if there's a difference in priorities or values um, between men and women. Um, I think that there's definitely obviously a timeline on women. So yeah. whether there's a difference in values or whether that just comes at a different stage in life between men and women, um, I think for men, I can't talk on men's behalf, but that could happen at any time, that realization that I don't want to be doing this anymore. But women, there's 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 a body clock. There's an actual physical timeline that we're unaware of about when that comes up mm -hmm. for all those women who I don't know who you're talking about, but I am going to assume maybe she wanted to be a mother at some point. Yeah, and if absolutely. you if you want to have children, which I do, I know not everybody does, and that's totally fine. Um you realize that you're forced into realizing these things because like if I'm not happy then I'm not going to have children at the point I'm not happy um that it's just not it's not realistic and you have to create this lifestyle for yourself where you are quite happy and quite comfortable to create a family lifestyle and I got to the point where I think when I turned 30 I think a lot of it happens for a lot of women at 30 we will go oh my god when's my time up we have no idea <laughs> when that is um yeah. and it's awful because it's it it according to the current evidence in science um we have to start worrying about those things at this time so whether men and women's values are different i'm not gonna say if that's the case i just think women get forced into that around around the 30s to start considering am i happy enough right now with the life i am to start settling down and creating a family and for me I wasn't that and I, I was scared about about being forced it to the point where I was going to have to have children and I wasn't happy with my current life so yeah and that, I just and that tracks that. with you say the other person I said it's not my story to tell so I'll be a, a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit subtle about who it was mm -hmm. but um because she would talk about the guys in the office and the guys that were making silly money. You know, you get a quarterly bonus and we'll go out and buy a Porsche cash. You know, like we're talking silly, silly money here. Yeah. But they didn't yep. get to go on holiday with their families. They didn't get to see their kids at bedtime every mm -hmm. night and they didn't get to do any of that stuff because they were going and earning money so that their partners and nannies or whoever else could could raise their kids for them. And for me, that that's not, yeah. not what I wanted. So I, my, my little girl's nearly two and I'm really proud of the fact that she, I'm there every morning when she wakes up. You know, I like that. She comes it's mad and... that you have a daughter. It's kind of <laughs> it scary. Is, you know, and, but now, <laughs> now I actually have to care about, you know, how the world treats yeah. women. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that is something that's interesting to me. Um, but, but you're right. And if it's going to put your mind to rest, you know, I, I was 39 and Tash was 39 when, when little Poppy was born. So, you know, you've got time, you've got time when we, we, do you know what though i this is why i specifically said according to the current evidence yeah. the science says because i'm meeting more and more women that are having children later and that's because i think more and more women are having those big careers mm. early in their life which is absolutely fantastic and more and more women are deciding that they don't want to have children which yeah. is absolutely fantastic uh, it's amazing but i, I also, also say i'm celebrating the fact that more and more men are also taking parental leave and or being a stay-at-home dad or taking more time and with this flexible working to be able to look after the kids that their, their, their children i think since covid the world has gone so much better um for absolutely everyone family lifestyles and things like that and i think the men had the um hopefully i'm speaking on their behalf obviously but had a realization that they had the flexibility now to also be allowed to raise their children yeah. i think that there might have been a standard in their head that said i'm i'm not supposed to be 
looking after my children. I'm supposed to be breadwinning, which is awful in itself. And some men might like that, but some men are like, oh my God, I'm now allowed to, to raise my children with my wife. How amazing is that? Um, but the timeline isn't there. So it, it's difficult. Generally speaking, I'm sure that people meet each other, which are a similar age. So the timeline might start to happen. So maybe in like years to come, decades to come, women and men may be having this realization around the same age. But at the moment, I think it could happen at any time for a man. Um, mm. I'm finding a lot of women that I'm meeting on my travels are having this question at about the same age. So all women around between 30 and 35 are all having this like, what am I doing with my life? Am I the person that I really want to be? And am I happy with what I'm doing? I need to go on like this self-discovery journey all by myself in my own little bubble to sit and think about it. Um, and you can't necessarily, I well, for me, certainly do that whilst I was working 19 hours a day. Hmm. And, and you know, what's interesting, so I, I've got a, a, a fantastic admin team in my company now. So we've got, um, and they're all female. Everyone that does, does my support and my kind of operations, I think are all female. And all of them are women who have got children and have come and have now come back into work because my company offers them a little bit of flexibility that because they're only working, you know, part time or flexible hours, which suits me because I've got really, really competent, intelligent, qualified people doing an amazing job. And I don't have to pay them, you know, 100 grand a year because they're yeah. doing it around the school run and, and working from home. Um, and oh, I think yeah. having having well, I mean, we've got someone doing HR, we've got two on my mm -hmm. uh i've got an ops director and i've got two on the the project team and they are phenomenal and these are really intelligent driven people um but i guess they they couldn't in have gone back into the corporate world with children because they've got to do the school run on these things i i guess technology i mean you're in another country and we're talking now there's nothing <laughs> yeah. to stop people doing zoom meetings and the like but do you think no. do you think companies are reluctant to let people work remotely or in your experience do you think it's it's still a thing that we can do uh, no. So I think that I, I'm a big believer that companies should be um, picking the best people and figuring out, like using the technology to figure out how to have those best minds and how to make the company work 24 hours a day, no matter how the technology, however they want to work, yeah. regardless of if that's, I want to work in the office and I want to do nine till five and, or I want to work from home or I want to work for, when it, like anywhere I am in the world. I know there's kind of tax and, and visa issues with that, that that come with that as well. But I want to see companies move more and more into that um, space. My company was quite old fashioned and we forced everyone back into the office five days a week. And that lost a lot of fantastic people. Um, I'm not just talking a lot of fantastic people, just a lot of people. Mm. Um, a lot of the big banks did that as well. They wanted to see people back in the office. And for the life of me, I just, it doesn't make sense. Like you're narrowing your talent pool right. by people who live in your area. Imagine, imagine what this will do for the entire world in terms of everything and how quickly everything will come along and how much money the world can make if the talent pool is the entire world. Yeah. It just, it blows my mind as to why companies just wouldn't want to move into that. Um, yeah, I think it's fantastic if you can have um, mothers working part time and around their work. And I, what I found was when during COVID, most people were working longer hours mm. because they had the flexibility to take the children to work, take their dog for a walk. They were happier and therefore they were happy to log in a little bit earlier and a little bit later. Yeah. And if you've got happier people who are working harder, it seems like a no brainer to me. Um, yeah, we should be encouraging that way more. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you should say. So I read an article yesterday of things um, that was talking about some companies um, are starting to ban people from going away from their home when working from home. And it's like, that's yeah. a weird thing. So I read the article and I, there were instances of, of people going on holiday, but taking the laptop mm -hmm. with them and were working from the beach or from the pool. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what's the difference? If they're doing their eight hours or they're doing their work, what does it matter whether they're at home or in Ibiza? It, it, does it matter? Yeah. And, and companies are so banning people doing this. Yeah, for me. So even for me, I went. I was working in Australia for a little while, and I went on holiday to Fiji, and I took my laptop with me, and there was an important meeting I had to attend, and I did it from Fiji, and it's fine. I imagine that there are a lot of people that take the mic, um, or might take the mic, um, but then HR needs to be in a better position to be able to handle that. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't think they know how to go about handling that situation or having the evidence to be able to put someone on probation or, or fire yeah. them potentially um, if they do 
um, kind of take the make a bit too much. But yeah, if you trust your employees, they're going to give you so much more back. I just That's remembered it. a point that I wanted to make on when you said um, that uh, you've got mothers working, uh, coming back to work. There needs to be something extra about giving women the confidence to come back to work because I don't think there's enough in that space. Um, so I think a, a lot of women are coming back to work because they can do it flexibly around the school run. But I think they also don't know how. So a lot of women don't know how to look for a job and they're so insecure because they've been out of work for such a long time. But mothers have gained so many skills from raising children that they should be allowed to put that on their CV. I would love to see someone see you that were like I've I've managed a small team of demanding like a four a four team of demanding children I'm the chef I'm the manager I'm like all of this stuff I'm the cleaner um I think that women should should just celebrate themselves more and what they do know and trust that they are so much better than what they give themselves credit for mm. I think there's a statistic an actual statistic that says something like I might not get this quite right uh that women only apply for a job if they can do 80 percent of what is on the job spec and men will do it if, it if it's like 50 or 30 percent something like that because women are so much more insecure in my opinion than men because they just don't trust that they can they can do it um and coming back to work after being out of work for such a long time must be so daunting and companies need to be doing more to mm give women more support into coming back into the workplace i also think that i mean i'm going on a massive rant now um but cv should uh, job spec should change so that they shouldn't be trying to hire people on this job spec that has all these things of this perfect person and then they're happy like hiring someone that can only do 50 percent of the job just yep. write down exactly what you're looking for then it needs to be a two-way thing um and i think a lot more can be done in that area and i would love to see more mothers going back into work so on that, I, I've never been a woman, so it's my, my <laughs> experience is somewhat, yeah, it's somewhat <laughs> limited. But, but in talking to women and particularly, you know, chatting to Tash after our, our little one was born, because she left um, a, a reasonably paying job, took redundancy and now is working to, to help my build my business. You know, she's working yeah, yeah. operations here, which uh -huh. is wonderful. Uh, but, you know, then suddenly my business has got to support our entire household. We've got a mortgage to pay. We've got a little one to raise. And something that, that's come up time and time again is when women have children, they kind of lose a bit of themselves and they stop being like, it, she's not so much Tasha, she's Poppy's mum. Well, having yeah, to do yeah, something yeah. To, to find herself. And I think going back into the workplace is a good way of doing that because your kid's not at the desk with you. So maybe going back into work um, is a good way of finding yourself. Yeah, I agree. I 100% agree. I think some women love it. Some women just mm -hmm. want to be Poppy's mom. <laughs> I'm sure. Like, I think that some people absolutely, like, they were born to do that role. Um, a lot of women do lose themselves, and I think it's really important. It must be hard as well because it's all this social expectations that we set. A mother must give themselves 120% of their child. You put your baby first. You put your husband first. Everyone comes first. Your best friend comes first. Your sister comes first. Your mom comes first, and you go last. You cannot fill anyone's cup if yours is empty so what fills your cup and if having your own identity and making yourself happy and not being poppy's mum, you know what i mean um if and just having a little bit of yourself and reminding yourself who you were before you had children um keeps your cup full so you can fill everybody else's cup that is so important but again people need women need help as to, to figure out how this happens and i think companies can do more to reach out to women and say we can help you and we understand that you have children and they are your top priority and we're going to help that and i think there is a lot to be done there yeah i think it's unrealistic that a company should expect and and i, I try and think this for my staff it's unrealistic for me to expect my business to be their number one priority it's my number one priority because it's yeah. it's the income for my household and it's my baby but it's unrealistic for me to expect i know the saturday boy to care as much as i do and i think that as long as you bear that in mind you understand that you know people have got other priorities and if someone has a genuine issue or a personal issue i try and tackle it and, and get on top and ask them if they need time off before it becomes a problem and yeah planning and accounting for things is, is a great way of doing it rather than just expecting that they're going to be here and do 120 percent because that's what i do but i'm supposed to they're not mm -hmm. and there's the difference between having a ceo who knows that they work for the company rather than at the company everyone in the company working for them um mm. it's a very different type of CEO and it's all of our own ideas of success we go in there are some people that still think I should show up before the boss gets in and leave after the boss leaves and there are bosses who understand that everyone's just people and we are all a team like when I was running a team like 
I'm, I work for my team. Whatever they need, I will make happen. They're doing all the work. I will just make sure that they have everything to be able to do the work. And if that includes sending them home on a half day because they've done too much work and I can see that they're going to get ill, then mm. go home, have a half day. Like, it's fine. Look after yourself so that you can be your version of success or whatever that is, whether you're going to be a mom, whether you're going to be a CEO, like, oh, filling everyone else's cup. You just want to be a best friend. Like, you have yeah. to look after yourself. Yeah. Oh, and that's fantastic. Yeah. And I think even though you, you're, you're an intelligent person, you're great with maths, it does seem like you're in the right place when you're working in operations because you you get it, you know, you understand. But but you've also been at the bottom of the rung. And a lot of people working in operations haven't ever been the barmaid or working yeah. for jobs. Or, so you understand what it's like to be on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love that. And I have so much respect. I think there's a, I don't know, everyone like having respect for absolutely everybody in the company that does absolutely everything regardless of like yeah working in a golf club working in a rugby club working in a cafe working in a shoe shop like whatever working in a trading like a big trading company um if you have respect for everyone's job and the idea of how everyone fits together in a team and how important that person's job is to make your job work and make this whole company click you just have respect for everybody and then everybody gets on better and I think that was really important part of my internship that I learned because I had the opportunity to go and sit with everybody and I was like tell me about your job because I don't know what this company does right now <laughs> and like <laughs> and then whenever I've had interns come and sit with me now that I was uh, like um, a senior leader like with three teams and and I'd have interns or or have new people or graduates join my teams um, I would say like go and sit with them and say I'm new to this job how can I make your job easier and how does my job impact your job like how can we work together and like I think like gaining all that respect um no matter how senior you are or no matter how junior you are if you have that mutual respect the whole company is going to work better so I, I want to spread that joy <laughs> and I mean, just just try and get some some really helpful nuggets out of you here. Okay. What what advice would you give to so there's a so there's a young girl that's living in a council house, working three jobs, thinking I'm never going to be able to travel the world. What what advice could you give as someone who's who's genuinely done it and is doing it? Any nuggets? Um, I've said that I keep this is my one that I say over and over again at the moment. Um, like trust yourself. You are smart enough. You are human. You have got through life solving problems, whether that be. Um, you fell over and you smashed a glass. You solved that problem and it wasn't the end of the world. No matter, and I really, really believe this, no matter what problem life throws at you, you are smart enough to overcome it. Do not overthink it. Stop overthinking it. And this is me telling myself massively, just deal with the problems as it, come, as it comes because they may not arise. You are smart enough. You, know, you have got through life this far. Just do it. Just do whatever it is you want to do show up to your deathbed thinking oh, i did all of it i did all of it and i'm so happy with my life yeah it, it genuinely like, it really warms my heart it makes like to look at you now and knowing <laughs> what you were like 20 years ago or whatever like <laughs> oh, probably not even that far like, like what 15 years ago right yeah absolutely incredible like uh, it's it's amazing to see you sitting there smiling in what venice where are you today i'm in venice today yeah we were in verona yeah. yesterday <laughs> We just did the whole of Venice this morning and I had to get the boat back across um, to come and do this. <laughs> so, well, thank you. So what, once, you've, once you've seen every country, which at this rate will be, you know, by the end of the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, do you plan to go back into the corporate world or do you want to be, be your own master? What, what's the plan? Um, at the moment, I really want to start my own business. So I've got two things on the go at the moment i'm doing this explore my magic explore your magic which is mm -hmm. i believe in magic in the world and no matter what it is to you um to me it's seeing the world and sunsets and beaches and the buildings and things like that and i want to show everyone that they are have the ability to have their own magic and, and they everyone should understand the magic in life and then there's the prime maths thing which is the tutoring thing so i'm trying to build an app um and i'm tutoring on the side and i'm trying to build an app to help tutor gcse math so i'm really really doing that um i'm not opposed to going back into the corporate world i would absolutely do that because i mean mama's gotta pay her bills right um okay. so the money will run out at some point um and I'm living very, very modestly. So I'm hoping that I'll take a long time. But do you know what? If these two businesses fail, 
I'll just try it. I'll, I'll see where I'm at. And I'm just going to to decide where I am at, at the time. I'm so okay with changing my mind with what I want to do. I want to be a CEO one day. Um, I will be a CEO one day, whether that's when I'm 80 or whether I'm 35, I don't know. Um, I will be. And um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I'm just going to, for now, it's all good. And then when something doesn't feel right, I will change it and I'll deal with it at the time. Hey, you're, you're already a CEO. If you've got registered yes. a company, even if it's just you, you're the CEO. Yeah. So whatever title you're I know. You I know. It, is, it is technically CEO. I just think, I don't know, in my, it's this whole version of success again, isn't it? It's awful. Mm. Um, I don't know at what point I think that I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to really feel like the CEO. Um, but yeah, I've just said like, I'm going to try this. And even if they fail, that's not a failure to me. I will have learned something. So Maybe I am a CEO right now. Maybe that's me ticking off CEO. Maybe I go back into the corporate world because it, I don't know what, maybe I end up having children next year. Who knows? And and I need a different, and my lifestyle changes and my needs change. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm not holding myself accountable and saying, oh, you can never go back into the corporate world because you left it. And you're saying all this stuff. Like, I don't know where I'm going to be next year. I don't know where I'm going to be. I literally don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. I don't know where in the world I'm going to be in tomorrow, what country I'm going to be in. So I was Which just- is brilliant. I'm like I trust myself enough and I've got rid of my ego I probably still have a bit of an ego um yeah. just to be like ah oh, do you know what it doesn't matter just whatever makes me happy on the day I'll figure it out fantastic and and the tutoring so you've you've got um you're doing tutoring and you're developing an app so yeah. I, again I've seen some of the stuff you put on the socials and I try and like and share stuff <laughs> thank I can, you but, um <laughs> Is is it just one on one tutoring at the moment, and you're looking at developing a platform, or have you already started that? Um, so I started building an app. It's way more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Um, so I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure that out, and then because I needed some extra pennies to see me along the way, I'm tutoring online at the moment. So I tutor, um, yeah, just tutor GCSE maths. I've been doing that the whole time. Like I've been in the corporate world anyway because I just love it. Um. So, uh, but yeah, I'm doing that and then I'm developing the platform at the same time. It helps with the tutoring because when one of my students needs something, it's almost like having my own little market and my own little like beta testers to be able to say, okay, what did we need that session? Okay, now I can just put it straight onto the app. And because I've been tutoring for so many years, I have so much material that I can just put directly on the app. How I'm going to get it live is a different story because it's going to be mm -hmm. timely, which is costly for me personally because it's my time. And actually launching an app is quite um, expensive. So I'm figuring all of that out right now, um, but also I'm doing so many courses and things like that. And what, one of the things I learned from Vietnam and seeing all these like marketers in Vietnam and just showing up on all these stalls is that stop trying to deliver something that's perfect just to deliver something and then learn and then just fix forward. So I would always, in my head, I was like, I have to, I have this idea of what this app looks like. I'm going to build that app and then I'm going to launch. But that's probably not going to be done for 10 years no, if I do it all by myself and I'm not earning any money on it and can't afford a team. So um, I'm going to potentially launch it. I'm thinking about launching it soon with basically only a couple of topics on it so I can use it for my students like, as yeah. and when. So yeah. today I'm doing ratios, for example. So I'll just launch it and then I'll just be like, oh, look, let, let's use the app to study ratios. And then... Um, and then if it's like half done and people start using it for ratios, then maybe I can start getting in some investment um, to help me build it out properly. So that's the idea at the moment. Um, but <laughs> And I'm learning so much. So even if this ends up falling over on its face, like I'm learning a lot. So it's all fun. It's all like learning branding and how to develop an app and, and build a team out. It's all very exciting anyway. Are you you're developing it yourself? Yeah, I'm just doing, well, I'm just wow. using one of the white labels at the moment. Um, mm. because it doesn't need to be anything fancy for my own personal use. But if I can get a, a proof of concept up and running, mm. an investor might be interested and then I can afford a proper developer. So, and I love, I love learning anyway. So I'm quite happy to learn how to code and I, I, I know how to code from my previous job. So that's fine. And these white labels are really easy to use. And like I said, it doesn't need to be anything fancy until I get feedback. And if I have proof that it's working, then I'll get investment. And what, what would the model be for that? Would you do ad, ad, ad supported or would it be like a premium thing that if someone's paying for upfront? Like yeah, kind I kind of, of want to do um, paying for upfront, like a subscription plan. Um, oh, I yeah. kind of imagine it being a little bit like Duolingo, basically, yep. where you have this, like you, you pay for it as you go. And then you have like the gamification side of it, because how do you make yeah. math sexy? And if you have the answer to that, I need to know because... 
<laughs> I don't know how you make math sexy. Um, and like stuff like in um the big apps, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, they're sexy apps. And like learning to teenagers is not sexy. So I want to try and figure out how to make that sexy. I think there's a gap there. Um, so yeah, gamification is going to be big. And I see it kind of. Yeah, a bit. you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, Duolingo of, of nail. Yeah. Like, I, it makes me want to go and learn the language, and it pesters you if you don't. Yes. But it's it's a game, and you're getting mm-hmm. points, and you get awards and achievements. But it's still yeah. mostly, um, mostly getting adults to learn because adults travel, mm. and they're the ones that can afford to travel, and they're the ones that want to learn the language, and they do it when they're sitting on a train. Kids still don't find it sexy. So what can we do? And this is where the research is coming. And this is why the tutoring is helping because I'm doing my whole, what do you like? I can then have little conversations on the side about like what apps are you using right now? If And I'm, I'm going to, I wanted to try and go into schools, but obviously I'm on the road now. I'm going to try and get in touch with yeah. schools to say to children, like if you were developing or if you had to fix Instagram, if you had to fix TikTok, what do you hate about it? Well, what would you do to change the big apps? And then they'll be like, oh, I don't like that the button's over there. I don't like that. Oh, it's really annoying that I have to reach my thumb across the left-hand side to do this. Oh, don't you find this interesting? Oh, I love Snapchat that you can do the photos and they disappear. I'm like, okay, all of this is really good information. And I want to kind of leverage off my tutoring to be able to help build the app. Yeah, I'm, you're still young enough to be cool, aren't you? So well, you don't have to talk to people like my you. Num- my number they get to the three now. <laughs> I don't know yeah, about that's cool. true. Yeah. Luckily, I look very young, so I can pretend that I'm yeah. younger. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've taken up way more of your time than uh, time. You know, time is money. <laughs> like, so, where can people find out more about Kaylee Venn and your platform and tutoring and all of these things? If people want to know more about you, where can they find yeah, you? Yeah. So, I am. Uh, I have a website for Explore Your Magic, which is exploreyourmagic.co.uk. That is my. Um, that's going to have all my blog on there. One day, I'm going to like to do retreats and say, if you're a single, fo- a single solo female traveler, I'm going to show you how to travel and travel safely. Um, if you're awesome. nervous and you've never done it before, and because of the safety feature, I'm going to I'm going to help you do that. Um, and all my blogs on there, so you can learn more about me. If you're interested in learning maths, <laughs> then you can go to prime-maths.com. And um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on TikTok for all of those things. You can see my travels, you can see them, my math stuff, you can see my face on the prime math stuff, uh, and me teaching maths very excitedly. So yeah, check it awesome. out. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank Kayleigh. you so much. Thank, thank you so much for coming on and chatting and sharing the show. And hopefully, you know, we'll we'll be able to get a message out there to to some young girls that want to do cool yeah. stuff and like actually they can. One hundred percent. They can do so. whatever they want to do. I mean, young boys can do whatever they want to do too. But um, yeah, I think I have more of a connection to the young women. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm going to be using you as an example for my little girl. Like, that's, like, go out and do yeah, it. Go try do and see whatever the world, you so. want to do. You can do it. You're smart enough. Just do whatever. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs>